Hey everybody, Susan Rashawn here, The Techie Mentor. Just a big thank you for listening to this podcast, the Virtual Assistant Tips, Tricks, and Advice channel where I share all things Virtual Assistant every week with no fluff, just the stuff that gets results. Hello my friends and welcome back or welcome to you if this is the first time listening to my podcast. I appreciate you taking the time to listen. Um, Today I want to talk to you about imposter syndrome. So this is something that you may or may not have experienced, uh, but it's very common when you're trying something new, um, especially something as momentous as starting a business. And let's just be honest, it is It is a big thing. It is a momentous change for those of us who've always had a J-O-B. And what happens with imposter syndrome is whether, you know, you've got your business set up or not. um, My point is, is that you can run into imposter syndrome at any time in your journey. For me, it really happened when I started to look for clients because I had a feeling of inadequacy or that I was not capable of doing what I said I was able to do. And so I almost felt like a fraud. But the thing is, is you have to separate fact from feeling. The reason most people get imposter syndrome isn't because they're an imposter or a fraud, it's they lack confidence and experience or one or the other or both. It's because we've never done it before. It's something new. So you can think about anything that you take on that is brand new, whether it's learning how to ride a bike or a horse or ski or drive a car, whatever it might be. At that time of the newness, if you will, there is a huge feeling of inadequacy that, oh my God, you know, I've never done this before. How do I know I can do this? But here's the thing when it comes to at least your VA journey is you have skills, it's just that you've never used them in the way that you're going to use them now. So let me give you an example. So I was a project manager um, in my previous life in corporate America, and one of my first clients wanted help with a project. And I had this overwhelming fear that I didn't know what I was doing. Well, in fact, I do know what I'm doing. I've been doing it for you know 15 years in, in a corporate setting. The difference is is that I was doing it for a client without the middleman, my J-O-B in the way, even though I'd been a consultant before. So it was not that I was a fraud or an imposter. It was just I lacked confidence and experience to do something new. And once I realized that I'm like, I'm not, I'm not telling somebody that I know how to do something I don't know how to do. I do know how to do this. It's just that I've never done it before. And I'm the type of person that is very transparent. I think honesty is always the key. And once I decided to share with my new client that, you know what, I've done this kind of project management work for 15 years in corporate America. I've just never done it in my own business. So I'm a little hesitant. And, you know, it's it, it's a little scary. And I was honest with them. And they're like, you know what, I was that way when I started my coaching business. Same thing. So you're not alone. But I think the most important thing is you know what you're doing. It's just you have to separate fact from feeling. You have to realize that your imposter feeling could be because you've never done it before for a client. So if you've learned how to do WordPress and you've been setting up WordPress websites for yourself, you know what you're doing. It's just you've never done it for a client. And so you get that creepy feeling that, oh my God, I really don't know what I'm doing. But you do know what you're doing. So some of the ways that you can help yourself overcome imposter syndrome is first of all, separate fact from feeling. Do you really know how to do a WordPress website? If the answer is no, then go learn how to do a WordPress website. And then you'll have the tools in your tool belt to be able to do the work. So separate fact from feeling. The other thing you wanna do is, is own your success. So look at what you've done with whatever you're feeling an imposter about, whether it's a specific skill set or, you know, um, marketing or sales or talking to a client or building a website. Own the pieces of success 
and the decisions that you make. This is where a success jar comes in so, so handy because what it does is it, it allows you to take stock of your successes. You need to look at those instead of focusing on the fear of being an imposter. Look at what you've done. Look how many years you spent um, in your J-O-B doing maybe specifically what you're offering as a service in your VA business. Really look at how far you've come. So start a success jar and use it. Now I've got a link for you in the uh, description of this podcast that you can go to my uh, blog post that I wrote on that. Very simple. Basically, it's just a jar or a bag or something that you can put sticky notes in it that basically says, this is what I've accomplished today, even if it's just a decision. Sometimes getting out of bed is enough, right? <clears throat> but then the other thing you have to do, and this is a killer, is stop comparing yourself to others. Because there's so many things that you don't know. You only see the highlight reel that's shared on social media. You don't know, in truth, what else is going on. And they're not more deserving of success than you. And comparing yourself to someone else, it's a no-win situation and it will spiral you down further into imposter syndrome. So stop. I had to stop because people were constantly sending me, you know, links and stuff and saying, oh, look what this person, you know, is doing. Look what this person is doing. And then I go, oh, wow, look at that. I mean, I'm not doing that. Should I be doing that? Well, my stuff does, you know, and then I start questioning myself and my worth and what it is that I feel is right for me. The other thing you have to realize is what's right for somebody else may not be right for you and that's okay. Follow your path. So I had to quit looking at what others are doing because it would knock me off my feet. You know, I have to learn to stay in my own lane. So stop comparing. Stop looking at other people that are doing the same thing that you're doing. Or if you have to look for a reason, make it short and sweet. The other thing you need to do is find a community that you can lean on. You know, there are lots of Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups full of others that are on the same journey that you're on. You know, I have um, my virtual assistant tips and tricks Facebook group and I have a LinkedIn group. That's a great community because others will help you because they've been there, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. They can help you understand that you're not alone and give you some tips on how to move forward. Be open to receiving positive feedback and compliments for the work that you do, whether you're still in your job or you have a client or you have a friend or a family. Be open to that and take it to heart. Failure. Failure means you're trying and that is so much more than many other people do. They sit on the fence and they don't ever take action. You're taking action. Failure is a learning opportunity. opportunity. It's not the end of the road for you. And that's something that I think for a lot of us, you know, that's ingrained when you make a mistake, it's the end of the world, but it's not. It means we're trying and then all you have to do is go, well, that didn't work, so let me try something else. That's part of being successful is being able to embrace those mistakes because you know you're trying and it gives you an opportunity to learn what not to do, what doesn't work. So you have to keep working on your imposter syndrome because what's going to happen is as your business starts to level up, guess what's going to happen? You're probably going to run into that imposter syndrome again when you increase your prices or you change your market or your branding or you learn a new service. It's going to creep back in and awareness is the first step in changing this. You're not an imposter and you're not a fraud. You're only an imposter or a fraud if you're lying to get clients, telling them what they want to hear. That's a different conversation. Right? It's just that you lack confidence and experience in doing what it is you're doing that's brand new. And one of the best things that I did for myself, because I suffer from this just like everybody else, is I really worked on my mindset because my mindset is what causes imposter syndrome. It's that reel that runs in your head over and over again, telling you stories that you end up believing. So you have to change the narrative. You've got to change the stories you're telling yourself because that only feeds the fear. You don't want to feed that monster. Work on your mindset. Get help around, you know, your imposter syndrome feelings or just get direction or clarity. There's a lot of times there are self-limiting beliefs behind a lot of things that, um, 
add to imposter syndrome. So one of the best things you can do is work on your mindset, read books, um, you know, take a class, uh, join a workshop or a boot camp. Um, I think I've mentioned many times that the thing that really helped change my life was the Money Boot Camp by Denise Duffield Thomas. It is amazing and it's something that you can go through several different times because as Denise says new level new devil which means as your business expands and grows you're gonna bump up against imposter syndrome again right so I hope this helps because as I said for me I still deal with us um, as my business grows and changes I still bump up against this but I know how to deal with it now I know that it's very common and it's part of growth and it's not anything bad. It's just something that you have to deal with if you want to go to the next level or the next step. So I'd love to know if you have any tips on how you've been handling your imposter syndrome. Please feel free to leave them below. I read each and every one and I will certainly reply because I do appreciate your time and your input. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you guys next week.